is a false god, a false god, a false god. Allah is a false god, a false, false god. Allah is a false god, a false god, a false god. Allah is a false god, a false, false god. And Muhammad is not a prophet. Muhammad is not a prophet. If you want grace and mercy and love, Islam is not for you. But Jesus is the way, the truth, the way, the truth and the life. Jesus is the King of kings who died to save us all. If you just repent and believe he took your sins on the cross, then mercy and grace, forgiveness and love, eternity can be yours. But Allah is a false god, a false god, a false god. Allah is a false god, a false, false god. If you want grace and mercy and love, Islam is not for you. But Jesus is the way, the truth, the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the King of kings who died to save us all. If you just repent and believe he took your sins on the cross, then mercy and grace, forgiveness and love, eternity can be yours. Hallelujah. Let Lord Jesus Christ shine forth. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you are joining us, welcome to another live stream with DCCI Ministries. And tonight, I think we, I will say we have the privilege of destroying Allah once again in a gentle way with the intelligent arguments. Because apparently Allah is so sensitive as Muhammad, we can't do anything to him. All we can do is just look at his words and then see how much mistakes he makes. So we will be talking about um, from eternal word of Allah. What does Allah teaches about core Christian doctrine? What does Allah teaches about who God is? Um, and we will be kind of looking at some of those verses and then we will sing Allah kind of lacking the knowledge a little bit. As we do that, I think this is privilege for us. We do have two individuals in the live stream. We do have as usual guest, she's not even guest anymore, daughter of Christ with us. And also we do have Brother Jay with us. So let's first, ladies first, let's go and say hi to Daughter of Christ. Peace of Christ be with you, sister. Peace of Christ be with you, sister. I'm so happy you didn't say, you said I'm not a guest anymore, finally. Yeah, you're not a <laughs> guest anymore. Now, like, you've got responsibilities in these live streams. You need to keep an eye on the chat. You need to yes. make sure you do lots of things. I'm really, really happy because we have an awesome brother with us today who uh, has great knowledge and great arguments. I, I can't wait, sister. I'm, I'm taking notes. You are taking notes? Good. Yes, I'm going to be taking notes and uh, keeping an eye on the chat as well. Good. Um, so we do have Daughter of Christ in one line and also we do have Brother Jay. Peace of Christ be with you, brother. Hi, Sister Hatun. Thank you, Peace of Christ with you and Daughter of Christ with you too. So, brother, we usually don't get gentlemen to join us in the live streams, especially when I do live stream with Daughter of Christ. Can I ask you what is wrong that you are joining us for the live stream? What is wrong? Um, yeah. well, what's wrong is <laughs> that Allah, um, the Quran, is what's wrong. And so I guess what we're going to be discussing today is how the Quran is wrong and how we can know that. So are you trying to tell me because Allah in his eternal word makes mistakes, therefore men and women, brothers and sisters in Christ can come together, work together to destroy or expose the word of Allah. That's exactly what I'm saying. Okay. Yes. So um, I did uh, put a couple of your videos on my channel recently, brother, but I'm not sure if um, individuals who are watching us know who you are. Can you just tell us who you are and tell us your favorite color and favorite food as well? 
<laughs> All right. Well, uh, I, I really appreciate you uploading my videos to your channel. I'm very humbled by that. And I'm happy to be with you both. I look up to you both and I consider myself a student of you both. Um, and a little bit of myself, um, I go by uh, a nickname, uh, Jay. Some people pronounce it Jai. Either one's fine with me. Um, I have a heart to reach out to Muslims and to Jewish people. And so a lot of my videos are focused on either Islam or on Judaism. Um, favorite color, green. And my favorite food is uh, salmon. <laughs> so you pick the color of Islam as your favorite color? Brother, what's wrong with you? Green is well, the favorite color of Muhammad. Remember, when he receives revelation, sky turns to green. That's right, yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, my favorite color has nothing to do with Islam, though. It just happens to be the case. <laughs> okay. Um, so, brother, um, why did you decide to um, um, expose Islam or reach the Muslims? Well, um, there was a period of my life when I was introduced to a lot of Muslims uh, who were leaving Islam or had already left Islam and uh, became Christians. And it just happened that I got to know them, became associated with them. And as I got to know them and we would study the Bible together and uh, learn about uh, different things together related to Islam and to Christianity, they would have questions and they would um, be they would uh, get objections against the faith by other Muslim by Muslims and uh, I happened to be with them, and so I, I learned with them at the time. I, I learned from people like Christian Prince, Sam Shamon, uh, a lot of people you have on your you, you've had on your channel before. Yeah. So I'm very privileged again to be with you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that, brother. Um, Thought of Christ. Since we've got brother Jay on the line, and he has to answer the questions we ask him before we get on the topic. Do you have any question to him? Um, do I have any question? Get to know questions. Oh, we get to know his questions. Favorite food oh. And his favorite color. We know why he's working with uh, Muslims. We know what yeah. he's doing. Anything else do you think we should know before we get on with life? Uh, yeah, I'd like to know uh, why he wants to reach out to Jews as well. Is there like a common theme? Um, so one of my one of my best friends was uh, or he is he's Jewish um, and it this it's just another one of those things that just kind of came to me. I wasn't out looking for these things, but um, my friend happened to be Jewish um, and he would ask questions about Christianity and he'd be raising it from a Jewish perspective, of course. And so I learned from people like Dr. Michael Brown and other people who are uh, specialized in answering Jewish objections and questions. Uh, and so it just kind of happened to be that way. I wasn't out looking for these things. It kind of like God kind of, you know, put me in their path. Um, brother, why are you Christian? Well, why I'm a Christian is because, uh, well, because Christianity is the truth. How do I know Christianity is the truth? Uh, when I was um, a teenager, I had an experience that God made himself real to me in a way that I couldn't deny and uh, ever since then, it's been a journey, and he's confirmed to me over and over again that he is the way, he is the truth, he is the life, and I've been following him ever since then. Okay, thank you. Um, so, Thought of Christ, last question to Brother Jay. People are asking in the chat, do you know Arabic, Brother Jay? Yes, brother, if you are working with Muslims, you should know the language of Allah, because otherwise no one is going to believe what you are saying <laughs> yes um yeah i do speak arabic um so yeah yeah so I, what, i'm just so happy to evidence? have a fellow arab here and hatun you're, or, you're already almost an arab anyway <laughs> you know so much arabic already so uh, brother give us a couple of arabic words so that we know that you really speak arabic <laughs> okay uh salam al -Masih. um and I'm with you today with my daughter of Christ, Um, Hello and welcome to you. Daughter of Christ, was that correct Arabic? Do we know what he said? Yeah, he it's, said. <laughs> it's perfect. Yeah, he says, uh, peace of Christ be with you too. I'm here with my sister's daughter of Christ and her tune. Um, 
What was the last thing you said? <laughs> oh yeah, he said welcome. Uh, Ahlan yeah. Okay. So yes, now we, we prove that you speak Arabic. So therefore, that gives you a right under the eyes of Muslims that we can speak about Quran. So, according to Christian scripture, um, Christian scripture forces me to believe God is triune God. There is one being, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. As a three person, one being God in three persons. Father, Son, and Spirit are different persons. They are, none of them are being created. Or Father is not the Messiah. Or Father is not the third of three. Or um, Angel Gabriel is not in Godhead. You look at from Genesis to Revelation, scripture forces forcing you to believe God is triune. But we come to Islam and then we see actually while Quran is the eternal word of Allah, that means Allah who is the creator of everything according to Muslims, with all of his wisdom is sharing the basic information with Muslims and giving his will to Muslims, eternal word of Allah becomes a book and then gives the will of, shares the will of Allah with Muslims, seems doesn't understand what the Christian scripture teaches. Um, surah 5, Surah 4, and it's pretty much messed up. We did couple, had a couple of sessions on, um, actually we even did a critique of um, Yasir Qadi, where Yasir Qadi expressed actually Quran in a sense doesn't understand. But we thought tonight we come together again and then we see the knowledge of Allah. Because if Allah doesn't know what the previous scripture are teaching about Christian God, or if Allah doesn't know what Christians are believe, what, what Christians believe, that makes Allah false God, that makes Islam false, and that makes Muhammad false prophet. So tonight that is the plan. So we will be talking about Trinity. Probably we will be talking about first um, according to Christian scripture who triune God is and then we will approaching the Islamic scripture to see how much Islamic scripture messed up. So um, therefore I just gently encourage those of you who are in the chat, beloved ones and guests, please keep the conversation in the topic so that everyone can help, have healthy conversations. Please do not abuse the chat please don't copy and paste the same thing 100 times in one minute it is not helpful to any anyone if you want to get our attention please put add sign in front of dcci ministries and then we will take your comments or questions or anything linked with the topic so with that, those basic rules let me pass on jay brother who is our delightful, amazing, and gorgeous God is? Can you tell us who is triune God is? Yes, our our amazing God, the triune God, is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And as you spoke about um, verses in the Bible, one that I just want to bring is Matthew 28, verse 19. Jesus saying, so therefore, go and therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So this is our amazing God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One God, three persons, three eternal persons. And uh, we see throughout the scriptures, um, for another example, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. So there we have Jesus Christ, God, Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. This is our amazing God, the triune God. So, um, because um, God of Christian scripture is identified as the triune God, lots of things make sense uh, about life. For example, we can simply say, we know actually in the beginning before everything else we know what god looked like before everything else before god to be king before god to be ruler god was father 
to his eternal son in the fellowship of Holy Spirit. We know uh, before the creation of everything, father loved his son in the fellowship of Holy Spirit. And um, we know how, like triune God involves in the creation. Um, we know like through, throughout Old, um, Old Testament how um, angel of the Lord or the word of Lord appears the individual, steps in the time and place and communicates with man and then expresses who God is. And then we see the work of spirit by giving life, giving gifts, bringing unity um, in the believers. And am I right to believe, brother, since you, kind of, you, since you are the one who proposed the topic, am I right to believe, brother, Islam steps in and then discredits the God I believe, the God I yes. worship? Yes, that God that we worship, the God that we just described, Islam steps in and Islam tries to refute. Islam tries to refute this God, the true God, the triune God. But in doing so, the, the, the author of the Quran, whoever wrote the Quran, can't be the true God. And how do we know that? Because when this book, when the Quran describes the Trinity, what Christians believe in, it horribly misdefines it. And imagine if, if, if I can give an analogy um, today for the, for the Muslim listeners, if, if a prophet were to come in our midst today and he was claiming to be from God and he, he, let's say he has a book with poetry in it, maybe he even has some miracles and he's, he's claiming to be this prophet and he's speaking from God. He's, he's the mouthpiece of God on earth. Imagine if he came and he said, Muslims, you are all wrong and you're incorrect because you believe that Muhammad is an alien from outer space. Right away, the Muslim could say, there's no way this guy could be a prophet from God. Forget about anything else he may have done. Forget about any poetry he might have. Forget about all of that. We can know that this guy is not a true prophet because he just said that we believe Muhammad is an alien from outer space. No Muslim believes that. We don't believe that. And they would be right. And so in the same way, when the Quran comes and it talks about the Trinity and says, Christians, you say three and you're wrong. Stop saying three. And then when it tells us who those three are, we'll get into it. We'll get into the, into the passages. We'll see that just like a Muslim would have every right to reject a modern day prophet who says that, Muslims believe that Muhammad is an alien from outer space. We have that same right to reject the Quran as being from God because it horribly misrepresents and misdefines what the Trinity is. Um, daughter of Christ, uh, you lived as a Muslim, you uh, looked into Islam. Uh, what do you kind of, what are your thoughts and feelings so far that Allah with all of his wisdom doesn't even know what Christians believe. Uh, I laugh now, now that I know the true God, now that I've read his word. Uh, I laugh now at the primitive mind of this fake God, Allah, that he just simply didn't understand the Trinity. He didn't understand. And because he didn't understand, because it came from the imagination of an illiterate prophet, because of that, 1400 years worth of generations of Muslims still to this day do not understand what the Trinity um, the what the Trinity is who the triune God is and they still to this day say to us three gods uh, this is tritheism the Trinity is not tritheism the Trinity is not three gods the triune God is one God, three persons. And because of this misunderstanding of the Quran, we now have generations of Muslims. Um, it's laughable, really, because as uh, our brother Jay and yourself will go into it later, they, the Quran tells us what these quote unquote three gods are, tells you off for worshipping them, when no true Christian in the history of mankind has ever worshipped the three gods that the Quran and Muhammad talk about. Go on. That's a bit um, shame for Allah and his uh, prophet who can't read or write. Depends actually if 
what kind of Muslim you are. Some Muslims believe he was able to read and write. Some Muslims believe he couldn't. Lots of contradictions in that anyway. Okay, so let me ask with the basic question. Um, since both of you are Arabic speaker, um, even though Christian scripture describes God as the triune God, we cannot find the word Trinity in Christian scripture, but con um, concept is there. And word Trinity kind of stepped into the um, um, Christian history in second century. What is the reason, or, or let me uh, put my question differently. The word Trinity, does the word Trinity is uh, mentioned in the Quran? Because by the time Quran was put together, and since the author of the Quran is so-called Allah, they should know Christians are talking about God as the triune God. So is the word Trinity or triune God in the Quran? And what is the word for three and what is the word for Trinity? Okay, um, I'll take that one. And then uh, daughter, if she has anything to say afterwards, I'll pass it to her. Um, the answer is no, the Quran does not mention the word Trinity which in Arabic is athaluth, uh, that's the trinity. Uh, um, and the word that the Quran uses when it says do not say three, uh, it's using the word, just the normative Arabic word for three, thalatha. So not the word for trinity, um, it's just the normative word for three. Thought of Christ, any and, comment? Sorry. Uh, yeah, I agree with my brother. The word trinity, uh, athaluth, it does not appear in the Quran. I think simply because Muhammad didn't know such a thing. He knew three, because I guess you could count, but he didn't know the concept of Trinity. Um, and uh, if I can add to what my brother said, in the uh, tafsirs, like say tafsir Jalalain, it does actually say three as in three gods, G, small g, o, d, s. So uh, it's not just the Quran that gets it wrong. It's um, the classical uh, commentators of Islam, including Ibn Abbas and Jalalain. They do say this means three gods, which uh, isn't what the Trinity is at all. So Allah has a bad communication skills and bad maths and bad theology. Yes, because yeah. when he says three, sorry. He doesn't tell us Sorry, what the three ahead. is. He doesn't tell us what the three is. He just says, don't say three. So is there a possibility that he might be talking about three apples, three cars? Anything with three? Three rings? I find it's a bit strange that, um, um, yes, I think Muhammad would know how to count because he knew how many wives he has and then he needed to schedule them. But... Um, since according to Islamic tradition, all of the Quran is Allah, I guess I may be disappointed by Allah that he doesn't even use the word I use for my delightful God. That's a bit shame. Um, so where do we go in the Quran to figure out what does Quran teach about triune God? Uh, sorry, not triune God, three gods. <laughs> right, okay. So... So it's kind of like it's kind of like an, an, an adventure or a journey we have to go on, if you think about it, because we have to do some we have to piece verses together, look at what this says and what that says and kind of link them together because, you know, the Quran is very um, incoherent and it doesn't have everything in one place. So I, I think that a, a starting place would be chapter four, verse 171. So we can see what the Quran says to the Christians specifically what it's telling them to do and what it's telling them not to say. So I think that would be a, a good place for us to start in chapter 4, verse 171. Okay. I'll put the verse on the screen. Okay. Um, um, brothers and sisters, remember... I don't know what translation can... you have on there, but... Um, so I've got on the screen, we can see the Arabic. I've got Piktal Sahinta National Yusuf Ali. So we will see how the, even the translations are being destroyed by Muslims, but that's a different topic. Yes, brother, you continue. Okay. I'll kind of try All right. to show this. So I have, um, I think this is from um, Sahih International, the one that I have here. It says, 
I'll just read this translation. Uh, this is chapter 4, verse 171. It says, O people of the scripture, do not commit excess in your religion or say about Allah except the truth. The Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, was but a messenger of Allah and his word, which he directed to Mary in a soul from him. So believe in Allah and his messengers. And then here's the key part. And do not say three. Desist. It is better for you. Indeed, Allah is but one God. Exalted is he above having a son. To him belongs whatever is in the heavens and the earth. And sufficient is Allah as disposer of affairs. So what we want to bring out from this verse is this phrase that says, do not say three. And so from this, we see that the Quran is addressing the people of the book, Ahlul Kitab, the, it could be the Jews and the Christians, but in this context, I think specifically it's addressing just the Christians. And uh, what we what we see is that the Christians, well, the Christians in Muhammad's time, just like, like today, were saying three. But what does the Quran think we mean when we say three? And uh, as we get into other passages, I think we'll have, have it defined for us pretty clearly what these three are by the Quran's perspective, and then we'll see how wrong it is. So we've got Surah 4, verse 157, 171. In a sense, um, like I, I do use this um, Quranic verse in some of the arguments to make a case, actually, Jesus is more than a messenger, but still the part we are focusing is, do not say three. Allah, with all of his wisdom, doesn't even say, do not say trinity. He says, do not say three. And, of course, Allah knows best who are those or what are those trees. Um, God of Christ, have you got anything to add at this stage? Yeah, uh, I'd like to say that we know that he means three gods. Because it, it says afterwards, it is better for you. Indeed, Allah. Allah is but one God. So that means, he means, don't say three gods. Uh, because Allah is only one God. So he already misunderstands. Lies does a straw man on Christians that they say three gods. If you ask any Christians, how many gods do you believe in? They say one. Except that Allah here says, don't say three, Allah is only one. So do you see, he doesn't know what Christians believe. Then that's how we we know he doesn't mean three persons. He he means three gods because he says afterwards, Allah is only one God. Yeah. Okay, brother. Shall I move to the next verse? Okay. Yeah. And I, I think I think the next place to go, because we want to now we want to figure out in this adventure together, this journey together, what the Quran says about three. We want to figure out what. Where else is this word used, three, in context of Christians? And then who, what's the identity of the three? So I think in ne the next place we should go is chapter five. Three. Chapter five, verse 73. Okay. Uh, do you want me to read it or should I wait for it to um, come on the screen? Uh, chapter five, verse 73 is almost yes. on the screen uh, almost on the screen brother it is getting that okay. you said no we are taking this journey into the quran to figure out but i think even my computer doesn't trust allah and his book to take a journey but yes now verse is on the screen okay so uh, again, I'm just reading, I think this is from Sahih International. Um, it says, they have certainly, certainly disbelieved who say Allah is the third of three. Oh, okay, so when the Quran says in 4 verse 171, do not say three, now we have the identity of at least one of those three. Okay, so they have certainly disbelieved who say Allah is the third of three, and there is no God except one God. And if they do not desist from what they are saying, they will surely afflict the dis they will surely afflict the disbelievers among them a painful punishment. So here we have an identification of one of the three, Allah, and it says Allah is the third of three. And 
I'll let you guys uh, comment on that. Thought of Christ? Yeah, uh, I wanted to ask you, do you, does anybody know who the three are? Allah still doesn't tell us. <laughs> we have to, like uh, brother says, put all these verses together, trying to work out who these three are. Uh, the Quran always talks to you like he, he assumes you know what he, he's talking about. Um, if we go to Tafsir, uh, Jalalain, which I sent you, sister. Uh, uh, say not three, and it tells you who the three are, because they can communicate better than Allah can. And uh, I guess in the chat who the three are. I think some of the, uh, any Christians believe that these are the, th the three. So um, yeah. I've, I've got yeah. I've got Jalalayan on the screen, okay. I'm not yeah. sure if anyone is having sound issue from um, YouTube, but um, there is kind of some sound issues right now in here. Uh, hopefully, it will go away very soon. So I've got Jalalayan on the screen, and Jalala. This is I think um, this is the um, Jalalayan on Surah four, verse one hundred seventy-one. Correct? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So, um, I then, the, the, um, so for Jalalayan talks about Surah 4, verse 171. Remember, bottom line is, Quran is well detailed, well explained, eternal word of Allah. And well detailed, well explained Quran, Allah fails with his communication skills. So, uh, individual steps in around 1,300 and then tries to explain to us what Allah really meant when Allah was failing with his articulation skills. In that one, for the Surah 4, verse 171, Jalalayan says, do not say that um, the, the gods are three. God, Jesus, and his mother. Do not say that the gods are three. God, Jesus, uh, sorry, do not say gods are three gods, Jesus, and his mother. So you've got Allah, you've got Jesus, and you've got his mother. That's how Allah is calculating number three. Sorry, not how Allah, how Jalalayan steps in and then helps Allah with his mathematical um, skills and then puts uh, three beings together. Yet, Brother Jay, Jay and Daughter of Christ already expressed, as a Christian, we do not believe in three beings. We believe in three persons. Father, Son, and Spirit shares the same essence with um, with one another. But in here, what we have is God, Jesus, and Mary, Mother of Jesus, are being three gods. So there is a question saying uh, the, the early Catholic Church believed that. Is that true? Um, um, that's definitely not true. Um, that's definitely not true. And uh, I don't know what they mean early, but we have um, we have a, a creed um, from from a saint, uh, Athanasius, who was the bishop of the Alexandrian Church. And we have one of the creeds that's attributed to him. Uh, he specifically says that this is our faith, that we worship the one God in Trinity and Trinity and unity. And he goes into a very explicit definition of what the Trinity is. He says, for there is one person of the Father, another of the Son, and another of the Holy Spirit. So I didn't hear anything about, I didn't hear anything about Mary in there or the mother of Jesus. He goes on to say, the creed goes on to say, but the Godhead of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit is all one. The glory equal, the majesty co-eternal. So, this is what the church. Uh, this this is what the this is what the the early uh, cop. I mean, this is uh, the fourth century. This uh, Saint Athanasius um, is from the fourth century, and uh, this is, he's representative of what the early Coptic Church believed in. I think one of the things is important. Um, so Quran is the eternal word of Allah. Allah shouldn't even be thinking what people are believing because end of the day 
Allah should know what he what in his previous book Allah is teaching. Uh, maybe like let's say sake of the argument. Okay, I'm gonna bring up a couple of things. Actually, let me put this. Um, so, brother, dear Mr. Muslim, you've been calling me over hundred times. I told you don't call me hundred times, and he's still calling. Um, so, um, let me actually show you something. Um, Daughter of Christ and brother Jay, you will Jay, you will be seeing this like approximately twenty second after I put it on the screen. So I've got study Quran here. And in this study Quran, um, Muslims are trying to tell us what Christians kind of believe, okay? Uh, and what does Quran teaches about um, Trinity. So for the reference, this is, let me show you study Quran. I didn't write it. It was put together by Muslims in the intention of encouraging them to study uh, study, <laughs> study the Quran, but it doesn't look like they have done that. So, study Quran, Surah 4, verse 171 in the study Quran, commentaries, okay? In the commentaries, it says, um, let me find, it, it's going to say in somewhere, I need to find that part, Christians actually don't believe this. Uh, okay, it's here. In... Page 269, okay, it tells us, so after like expressed um, all these three gods, everything, um, people are saying, however, it should be noted that Orthodox Christian doctrine mainstreams that the full humanity of Christ as a theological necessity, even if holds that the this humanity is inseparable uh, my, mysteriously from his divinity. And then also in here, it's going to tell us this is not the Christian's belief. Let me find that part, actually. I was reading that a couple of years ago. I need to find the part. So it's going to tell you, like, this is actually not what the Christians believe. But it tells you Okay, in here. Christians who took not only Jesus, but also his mother, Mary, to believe divine, according to Surah 7, verse 73. This is what the verse we are looking. However, however, the orthodox doctrine of the Trinity as three persons, not beings, but three persons within the one God is not explicitly refer referenced and the criticism seems direct to the those who assert the existence of three distinct distinct gods okay and that idea is being rejected by Christians okay it's saying okay even though Christian Quran talks about three beings in the um, as it um, make a comment regarding the who Christian, Christians believe or what is teached in the scripture, author simply says, apparently Allah messed up because Christians don't believe that. Even Muslims are not telling wow. us, Muslims are telling us, actually, Allah messed up. Christians don't believe that. Because it says Christians believe in three persons, but in here it is talking about three beings that was page 270 67 268 of study quran put together by muslims in the intention for individuals to study please to study and i don't want to be the one like mean one who tells you allah messed up but all i did was i just read that's what they say like christians don't believe that and allah knows best how this end up in the Quran? Well, yeah. so so, it's even a message that Muslim scholars are trying to reconcile what the Quran says to basically to reality. To what um, of these countries please clarify or correct what it says. Okay. Um. Brother Jay, I'm going to ask you to repeat that because this, sorry, 
this guy has been calling in and in and the moment he calls you it's affecting your affecting the sound so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna block okay. this guy but just give me a second i i'm sorry about that and i already told him like a hundred times to not call me <sighs> sorry just okay um it is uh, mode that you can put on this type of The moment he calls in, it is affecting your, um, affecting the, so I'm sorry, um, brother, let me just, let me just take the call. Sorry. Hello, sir. Sir, you called me over hundred times. Yeah. You called me in one hour over 43 times. And then I yeah. told you, please call me on Wednesday or on yeah. Friday joining the live stream. Okay, now you are you calling me again. I told Excuse you I, told me. I have final sir, exam. Shush. Sir, shush. I don't care you have got exam or not. Hey, 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 hey. Don't say I don't, shush. Ca I don't hey. care you've got exam or not, okay? Please stop calling hey, don't, me. Don't say shush. You called don't me you called me a hundred times. It is not acceptable. And no, right now you, you are calling me. Tell me shush. You are calling me in the middle of live stream, even though I told you don't do that. Okay? So can you please call me on Wednesday or on Friday? That's it. Sorry about that. Sorry. Um, Dot of Christ. We are back on live. Yes, sister. Sorry. I like now. Like still, he's calling. It's just affecting the sound quality, and just sorry, brother. Can you? Can I ask you gently to repeat again? Sorry about that. Okay. How's, how's my sound now? Is it better? Um, your sound is better, but when the person calls, just change the quality okay. of the sound. So sorry about that. No problem at all. Um, so it, it's just, um, it's the devil getting upset. It's a spiritual attack. So um, I, I th there also might be people who can go on Do Not Disturb. Maybe that would help. But what I was saying was that it's amazing how these commentators have become modern day Muslims in the 21st Coming along and have to collect as they know that if you keep Allah alone by himself, the God of Muhammad God doesn't exist. You know that it's, it's gonna it's, it's self defeat. Like as we're showing, uh, so they have to along and back to what Allah is meant to say. Um, brother. Sorry, I'm having sound sound issue because this person is just stop us uh, calling in and calling in. Um, okay. Sorry. Uh, so it just change. It, it it is just affecting the sound quality. I, I'm so sorry about that. I'm just gonna get rid of him. I did block him, but he set up different account, and then he's calling again and again. It's just out of control. Um, okay. Okay, okay, uh, I fixed them. Sorry, brother. Um, All so, right. um, according to study Quran, um, like interpretation of the study Quran regarding Surah 4 verse 171, Allah really, really messed up. And um, Christians don't believe in three beings, but Quran talks about three beings. Christians believe three persons. Uh, you were making a comment on that, brother. Yes. Um, are you able to hear me now? Yes. Clearly. Okay. Yeah. yeah I, I was just I was just saying that um, it's amazing how these commentators have to come along today in the 21st century and correct what Allah actually meant to. Uh, yeah, sorry, sorry, the guy. Go on, brother. Okay. Um, I, I was just basically making the point that the, the modern commentaries have to come along. Even the old commentaries, they, they, their job is to correct what Allah says because they know if the Quran stands by itself, then everybody will just see that it's false. So they have to try to twist things and, and correct what he meant. That I see that's already a problem because Quran screams out as... Quran is well detailed, well explained, and Muslims are coming in 
uh, in the tafsirs are explaining to us actually Quran messed up uh, sorry Allah messed up let me help Allah with his communication skills and then 21st century Muslims are coming in and telling us oh we are actually we need to say sorry but we cannot say sorry on behalf of Allah but we know this is not what Christians believe I find it like sad Yeah, they're basically saying believe us, don't believe all, don't believe in Allah, don't don't believe what Allah says in the Quran, but believe what we say. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let me go back to put on the screen Surah five verse um seventy three, because this is the one uh, we are talking about. Also, uh, let me ask a practical question. Um, so when we talk about triune God. We, by default, we say, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. We do not say, we do not say, um, God the Father is the third of three. We do not say, the Son is the third of three. So we, we go in the, by default, we go Father, Son, and Spirit. Even though, just kind of side note, um, if anyone gets confused in here, and if anyone thinks maybe as it says Allah, um, Allah is talk. Uh, sorry, uh, the, the ver uh, in the verse as it says Allah, maybe Allah is talking about Father. Father is the third of three. So don't fall in that trap, because that's what Muslims are gonna tell you. Remember, Allah is Father to no one, and Allah is a being. Allah is a being versus. Father is a person. So don't fall in the traps that Allah, Father is the third of three. That's what the Quran is saying. Please, please do not fall into that um, trap. Um, Thought of Christ or brother, have you got anything, uh, anything to add on Surah 5 verse 73? This is the second verse we looked after Surah 4 verse 171. Um, go ahead sister daughter if you have anything to say on it i think this is a very good um point to make sister what you said about allah being a um a being making himself one of the three fake trinity and for me this is how we know uh, islam is satanic the quran is satanic because it wants to uh corrupt the true uh, uh, the nature and make uh, and say lies about basically giving you account of a trinity or a, it's not a trinity it's a counterfeit three to uh, oppose the real triune god that's how i know islam is satanic go on sister. um brother have you got any do you want to add anything on um, 573 so because you you are taking us the journey to figure out actually this all wise and all knowing Allah uh, as he tells us what Christians believe or try to explain what Christians believe uh, we are kind of investigating so first one is Allah is the third of three right um and and just to just to give one more final like uh if anyone was in any doubt about what this means, to give one more final point to it, um, I, I sent you uh, the link to the commentary from Ibn Kathir, um, and he specifically comments on, on this verse, and he's talking about these big Muslim names, like these scholars, Mujahid, and, and these other ones, and he says that this ayah was revealed talking about Isa and his mother as gods besides Allah thus making Allah the third of the Trinity. So, yeah, a big, big Muslim comment on that one that talks about Allah being the third of three, that this is a reference to the Trinity, and he goes on to say by the three of earlier Muslims before him, that the other two are Isa and his mother. And so, even the Muslim commentators are taking this to mean that this is about Christians and this is about the Trinity and the Trinity is, according to the Quran, uh, Isa, his mother, and Allah. 
So that will take us in Surah 5, verse 116. Uh, where, so, so in Surah 5, Allah quite a lot talks about what Christians believe. And then Allah says, do not say three. Only three names Allah gives is in Surah 5, verse 116. Allah, Jesus, and Mary. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and so it's like, as you said, um, it specifically identifies the other. So 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 what we're looking for is the three. Who does the Quran identify as those three? Um, first, we see that it's it's Allah. He's the supposed to be three. We see the Quran as the sister of God and then Ibn Kathir. Um, they there. We are Isa, his mother, and his um, And then this verse specifically says, uh, verse one sixteen, that on the day of judgment, Allah will say, "Jesus, son of Mary, you say to the people, take me and my mother as deities or gods besides Allah." So there is a specific identification of, of the other two. So we have Allah. Jesus and his mother and the Quran treats them as three different gods as a part of this three this trinity okay so um, you are Christian and anyone who identify themselves as a Christian by default they must believe in triune God by default you cannot be Christian and not believe in triune God because that just everything starts foundation of our faith starts with the triune God so as a Christian do you believe do you believe God Jesus and Mary as part of Trinity absolutely not Are you and sure? in fact in fact by the time of Muhammad we were talking about the sixth, seventh centuries. By that time, there were there were there were creeds that were clearly. Def I mean, we have the Bible. First of all, we talk about what the Bible says: um, baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, Jesus, the, and um, we have uh, in the other verse in Second Corinthians chapter um, thirteen, verse fourteen: the grace of the Lord Jesus, um, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. So, so we have the Bible defining what the Trinity is. But by that time. There were, there were creeds that the church was defining very precisely what Christians believe. And in that time, by the time of the 6th and 7th century, we know exactly what the Christian church, we, we, we know exactly what the Christians believed. We have the creeds, we know what the Bible says, and then we have the creeds outside of the Bible. And we have the writings of the church fathers and uh, extra-biblical writings that tell us what Christians believed. And they did not believe that the Trinity was was Jesus, his mother, and Allah. They didn't believe that. And we don't believe that today either. But if they didn't believe that, early Christians, if the scripture doesn't teach that, and if as a Christian, we don't believe that in 21st century, that simply makes Allah liar and false God and Muhammad as false exactly. prophet. Are you sure that you do not believe that. Are you sure that Christian scripture doesn't teach that? Yeah, I am 100% positive okay. that I don't believe that. And I'm positive that the Bible does not teach that. I'm positive that the Bible teaches that the one true God, the triune God, is one God, not three gods. And within this one God, three persons, not three gods, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Positive. Okay. Daughter of Christ, do you believe, do you believe, or does the Christian scripture, according to you, you are Christian, you are a lover of Lord Jesus Christ, does the Christian scripture teaches Allah, or God, let's say, sake of the argument, Jesus and Mary as gods? No, absolutely not. That is blasphemy. Far be it from the truth. I do not believe that. I have never believed that. And I will never believe that. Uh, not only that, nowhere in scripture does it say, first of all, 
Allah, I don't know who that is. Uh, Aisa, who is that? Scripture, scripture doesn't talk about Aisa. Uh, where is it in the scripture that it says Mary is God? Where is it in the scripture that says there are three gods? No, no, no and no. And I can see people in the chat <laughs> saying the same thing. Three wrongs, Alashka saying. Uh, we do not believe Mary is God. We've never believed that. It's fabricated nonsense, according to X, Y, Z. Uh, lots of no's, no's, and no's. And uh, unfortunately, my family have disowned me because they think I believe that. No. <laughs> uh, any Muslims listening, I do not believe in three gods. Hero Israel, our Lord, God is one. God is one. I believe in one. God, his eternal son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and his Holy Spirit, three persons, one God. Stop believing the Quran, please. It's not true. Um, let me just clarify something. Um, I said anyone who claims to be Christian, by default, they must believe in triune God. You cannot say, I am Christian, yet you do not believe in Trinity, okay? Just this guy just like stressing me now. This guy is still calling in. <laughs> let, 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 me, let me just um, emphasize what I said. Because you look at the world religions and you look at Islam and you see Christian, Christian God is unique. His identity is different than any other beings. Uh, He's the one we worship. He's the one who is identified as the triune God. But if you do not believe as a Christian um, to the triune God, yet in somehow you are identifying yourself as Christian, yet you don't believe in triune God, that's already like bad, like so bad. You've got to fix your theology. That means your uh, account of creation um, God's revelation and even our story of salvation will be all affected. Why is that? Because triune God is the one who is responsible for creation. Triune God is the one who reveals himself as well as this God is the one who is responsible for salvation. Like you could believe in the death of man called Jesus Christ. You could believe uh, this um, Jesus Christ's resurrection, bodily resurrection. You could even believe that you are saved by grace alone. You could even believe that uh, Jesus is this in one point and time become the Son of God, or um, Father um, Father took different forms. All those kind of things, and then you can play all of, all about the identity of God, but. Bottom line is this, you cannot be Christian unless and unless you believe in triune God. God, Christian God is triune God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. From eternity beginning to eternity end. If God is not triune God, I am afraid to tell you that your salvation is, you don't have a salvation. Because if Christian God is not triune God, that simply makes, in one point and time, someone stepped into the world or God hired someone to save his people. That doesn't make God unique. That doesn't make God God. It's all shaky. Therefore, let me emphasize once again. If you, tell, if you say you are Christian, yet you do not believe in triune God, you are in a wrong, wrong, and wrong place. Without trying God, you do not have salvation. Without trying God, you do not have revelation. And without trying God, you do not have place in the bosom of the Father. You do not have place in the presence of trying God. Therefore, it is very important, anyone, who identifies themselves as a Christian, by default, you believe what the scripture teaches. And scripture forces you to believe God is triune God. Scripture forces you to believe that. So, like, I do get to hear there are 
for example, there was a gentleman who had a uh, debate with Anthony Rogers. He identifies, in one point, he identified himself as a Christian, yet he didn't believe in trying God. So there is not something called Unitarian Christians or modalist Christians, because they are not Christians by default. They are not Christians by definition. You cannot be Christian if you do not believe in trying God. Maybe you still believe you are saved by grace alone. You are believing bodily resurrection. You believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins. But no, you are not Christian. Because everything holds together. Salvation, revelation, creation. Everything holds together in trying God. That's why I said that you cannot be a Christian if you do not believe in trying God. Not in any form or any shape. There is only one form and one shape for triune God. One being God in three persons. Father, Son and Spirit. None of them are being created or edited up. Or stepped into the light in one point or another point. From eternity beginning to eternity end. They are identified as Yahweh. Three persons is identified as Yahweh. That is the bottom mark. So therefore... When you kind of look at these silly statements in the Quran by Allah, since this is the eternal word of Allah, when it says, oh, someone takes Allah, Jesus, and Mary, among, uh, God, among, along, alongside of others, simply they are lying. Simply they are lying. Because if, sake of the argument, if this is the case, if this is the case, you do not have salvation if sake of the argument there were in one point and another point that there, there was no actually but if there was one point there are two christians who believed allah jesus and mary are three gods you don't have salvation still you, allah has to deal with the holy spirit but allah fails to deal with holy spirit so brother j and daughter of christ they are bible reader Christians, biblical Christians, they don't believe what Allah is saying. So this verse cannot be for them. But Allah and Muslim scholars interpreting this verse for Christians. All I can say is Allah very much messed up. If I was Allah, I would hang myself. Good thing is I am Christian. I have a hope I cannot hang myself. But if I was Allah with this information, I would hang myself. It makes sense why Muhammad wanted to commit suicide because he knew Allah is giving, going to give him lots of wrong information. Anyway, brothers, so that was, brothers, that was my just juggling around. I think Amen. it's very important, very important to um, actually say what we believe uh, in detail so people aren't confused what a Christian is. And thank you for that, sister. Go on, bro. Yeah, I was just saying amen to what you said. Um, there, without the Trinity, there's no salvation. Uh, um, the Bible teaches it emphatically. That's what we must believe in as Christians. There's no such thing as a Christian that is not Trinitarian. There's no such thing as a Christian who doesn't believe in Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God, three eternal persons. Um, and you also you also mentioned something as well that. Um, the Quran seems Allah seems to forget about the Holy Spirit. Yeah, and that's a very strong point because the Quran. Um, I don't know if we're going to go over the other verses or not, but there, there are other verses that talk about specifically um, Mary and how she's this a part of this three that the Christians talk about uh, when they when it says do not say three that that Mary is that the mother of Jesus is identified as one of those three. Yeah, and so the Quran is very very clear on who the, who it thinks the three are. But what it never talks about, it, as you said, is the Holy Spirit. And it never talks about how Christians believe in the Holy Spirit. It never talks about, it never condemns the worship of the Holy Spirit. Nothing. Imagine if, if, if most, so, so I don't believe that the Quran tells us that, that the Holy Spirit is, is the angel Gabriel, but that's what Muslims tell us. That's what the Sunni Muslims are telling us, right? They're telling us that, that the angel Gabriel uh, is actually the Holy Spirit. Now, if that's true, if that's the, if that's true, what Muslims are telling us, then according to them, we would be worshiping a created angel. 
so why doesn't the Quran ever condemn us and say, Christians, don't believe, just like it says, those who disbelieve say that Allah is the Messiah, or those who disbelieve say that Allah is the third of three. Why doesn't it ever say something like, those who disbelieve say that, uh, you know, th an angel is God, or, or the Holy Spirit is God. Why doesn't it ever condemn that? Why doesn't the Quran ever speak about the Holy Spirit in relation in relation to the Trinity? And I think that the that the fact that the Quran doesn't do that is all the more proof that that we know that the Quran is not from God. We we just we know that because the Quran, if it was from the true God, the God who knows all things, then then it will be clear. It will be clearly defined what this what 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 we believe and what the Trinity is, and then. It's supposedly going to condemn it, but the we know the true God wouldn't condemn the Trinity because the true God is triune. But for the sake of the argument, for the sake of argument, if if the Quran is from the true God, then it would tell us what the Trinity is. It never does that. And because it never does that and it condemns a wrong doctrine, a wrong conception of the Trinity, we can know 100% that the Quran is not from God. Yeah. Um, let me actually share something else. Um, uh, and then after that, we move to the, the other references, brother, if that's okay with you. So, let, okay, sure. Let me, let me show you a um, wonderful biography of Muhammad. Where, are, where is this thing? Okay. So, this is biography of Muhammad has been translated by devoted Muslims. Okay, sorry, written by devoted Muslims and then translated and then you come to the biograph. One of, this is one of the earliest, by the way. Okay, one of the earliest. Dated, as I say, one of the earliest, dated like 833. Okay, so in here, um, let, let's just read it together. Let's just read it together. And then you see like, not only Allah fails with the knowledge, and then how Muslim scholar steps in and then tries to explain us what Allah meant. Okay. Page, what is this page? 271. They were Christians according to the Banzantayan right. True, they differ among themselves in some point saying, okay, he is God. He is the son of God and he is the third person of the Trinity which is the doctrine of Christians. So, they are talking about, and then they are saying God, and then he is the son of God, and he is the third of the Trinity. That's what, what, which is the doctrine of Christianity. They argue that he is God because he used to raise the dead, heal the sick, and declare the unseen, and make clay birds, and then breathe into them so that they flew away. This is Surah 3 and Surah uh, 5 uh, regarding Jesus. And all this was by the command of God Almighty. We will make him sign to man. They argue that he is the son of God in that they say he had no, he had no known father. He, he, he spoke in the cradle, cradle and this is something that no child of Adam has ever done. They argue that he is the third of three. So in the Quran, Allah is the third of three. According to the earliest biography of Muhammad, it is Jesus is the third of three. See how messed up? That's why I say if I was Allah, I would commit suicide. They argue that he is the third of three in that God says we have done. We have commanded we have commanded, we have created and we have declared. And they say if he were one, he would say I have done. I have created and soon he and he and he is he and he and Mary Jesus and Mary concerning all those assertions. The Quran came down. So there are people who are saying Jesus is the third of three. Okay. Why? And they are saying Jesus is the son of God because Jesus gives life to death. Jesus creates faster than Allah. He's like so faster than Allah. 
And Jesus is the only one who speaks from the cradle. Jesus is the only one who raised the dead. And then he knows the unseen. Okay, that's what people are believing. And then Allah sent his eternal word by saying, actually, let me correct you on that. While in the Quran, while you say Jesus is the third of three, I am going to say Allah is the third of three. Messed up. Messed up and messed up. So we got um, a statement from Abbas. He's saying nowhere in the Quran does it say Allah, Jesus and Mary. Has right. he ever read the Quran? Maybe he skipped. Maybe in his Quran he cannot see Surah 5 verse 116. Shall we read it for him? It was on the screen. Let me be kind and put on the screen again. I'm just very much kind. Yes. And and as you're pulling it up on the screen, we, we went over commentaries such as Al-Jalalain and Ibn Kathir, and they identified the Trinity. And, and like you just read, so Muslim commentators are identifying the Trinity as Jesus, his mother, and Allah. So does Abbas know more than these commentators? Or more than Allah? Yes. Yes, brother. It's Prophet Abbas. He's better than Ibn Abbas, which who, who does say that, Mary, Allah, and Jesus. And he's better than Al-Jalalain, too. Wow. Okay. Well, I'm curious how he deals with the argument that we raised, where I think it's a pretty tight argument that the Quran is defining those three as Allah, Jesus, and his mother, Mary. Yeah, the, uh, the verse clearly says, take me and my mother as deities. Deities, that means God's best. Right. And then if we go to other passages that are on the same topic of, of, of speaking about Mary, because I think it's pretty clear when the Quran says um, that the disbelievers say that Allah is the third of three, it's clear identifying him as one of the three. And, and then the verse right before it is talking about Jesus and how the disbelievers say that, the, that Allah is the Messiah. So, so we have two identified there as two of the three. And then like from passages such as 5.116, clearly Jesus and Mary are being uh, said to be said, you know, said it's, it's what it's suggesting is that that Christians believe that Jesus and Mary are both gods besides Allah. And there are other verses that talk about this. If we go to chapter 5, verse 17, for example, chapter 5, verse 17 also talks about the idea of Mary being believed to be God. Yeah, it's coming. Chapter okay. five verse seventeen. Okay. Yeah, so so in so in chapter five verse seventeen, basically what it's saying is that, that if Allah wanted to, if Allah wanted to, he could destroy Jesus and Mary. And then it goes on to liken them to everyone else in the world so it's saying that if Allah wanted to he could destroy Jesus he could destroy Mary why would it say that unless it's trying to show unless it's trying to refute what it thinks Christians believe so Allah is, supposedly has this power to destroy Jesus and destroy Mary God forbid but that's what this verse is saying and then it says and, and he's also able to destroy everyone else in the world so what it's telling us what it's telling us is that Jesus and Mary are no different than anyone else in the world and and if Allah wanted to, he could destroy them. Why would the Quran say that unless it's trying to refute the idea that people actually believe that Jesus and Mary are gods? Just like chapter 5, verse 116 says. So Allah is not doing well with the knowledge. Also in the same um, verse, let me just emphasize something. Allah is the Christ. Who says Allah is the Christ? None of, no one says, none of the Christians says Allah is the Christ. We say Jesus is the Christ. The Son of God is the Christ. Not Allah, just like bad, bad knowledge of Allah. That, that's the problem when it comes from an illiterate who just ha can't read. He just has to hear things from people. He starts getting the worst confused. No, yeah, we don't have Allah is the Christ anywhere in the Bible. <laughs> Or any Christian will say that. It will say Jesus, like he said, sister, but 
gets his words yeah. confused. And, and if and if um as uh, Sister Hatun said earlier, if we were to understand Allah here as being the Father, then this would be a huge heresy and a huge mistake because it's saying that that the disbelievers are saying that the Father is the Messiah, right? Um, which we, no one says that we don't say that. That we consider that to be heresy. Yeah. So as but, a but what what else is? Sorry, go ahead, Sister. Uh, no, go on, brother. You are the guest. I, I was just saying. I was just saying. What else this verse says is that Allah can destroy both Jesus and His mother, just like He can destroy the whole world. And so that's the point that we want to emphasize on that that this this, this identification as uh, two of the three members. Actually, we have all three here. We have Allah, Jesus, and Mary, the mother, the mother of Jesus, all in this one verse. Yeah. And um, I think let me just make um, a case regarding if Allah, if Muslim tells you Allah is the father who is also identified as the God of Old Testament, just remember Allah is not father to anyone. That's one of the essential things we need to know as a Christian. Allah is just like lonely and needy being. And for Allah is Christ, that means like Muslims would interpret that as should be interpreting that as Father is the Messiah. Father is the Christ. But Christian scripture doesn't teach that. So if Father is the Messiah, that means God is changing forms. If there is a time and place, God is just a father. And then suddenly another time and place comes. God becomes a son or becomes, uh, yeah, becomes son um, who appears as Messiah. Like father doesn't change shapes and forms. And then after son dies, son again becomes father or spirit takes over. So we don't believe that. We do not. Christian scripture doesn't teach God. Um, there is a term for that, modernism. Christian scripture doesn't teach that. So Messiah is second person in Godhead who is identified as the eternal son of God. Messiah or Christ is not Allah or not Father. So those terms, maybe like we don't give attention, but those are important terms for us as a Christian. Even if you are reading basic Christian Bible, nowhere in Christian Bible, Father is identified as Messiah. Nowhere. Yet Allah steps exactly. in and then Allah identifies Allah as Messiah. So Messiah is Hebrew word, Christ is Greek word for that. So it's the same thing in case like anyone doesn't know why I'm using them interchangeable. And in Surah 5 verse 17, Allah is going to destroy Jesus and Mary and anyone else if he wants to. Just yeah, and just, uh, just, a, just a quick side note on that. Muslims are always telling us how... Uh, the Quran and Islam respects Mary. They say, oh, we respect Mary, respect the mother of Jesus. But right here, it's saying if Allah wanted to destroy her, he could. How is that respect? Yeah. Go ahead. And they say also they'll respect Jesus, but here Allah says I, want, I can destroy him if I want to. Yeah. Um, we got Apostate Lee. He says, Virgin Mary was also believed by some at the Council of Nicaea, who said there were two gods beside the Father. And uh, there was a group called My Mariamites who uh, think that. Is, is that true, brother, sister? He's lying. Council of yeah, Nicaea, was... <laughs> go read that up. Yeah, there there was no group that believed that um, in the during the time of the Council of Nicaea in the fourth century. Um, there, there was a, oh sorry sorry there was a group that um, I think what he's referring to is it the Coloridians, but that it wasn't addressed to the Council of Nicaea. Um, the Coloridians were a group of people that we, some people don't even, some people doubt their existence. Um, th these are a group of people that uh, supposedly lived uh, in some part of Arabia. Um, and uh, th there were like one out of like many, many heretical groups. And they didn't, they didn't believe that Mary was part of the Trinity, but they, they, they offered her like part of the the bread for for like the Eucharist or for the commu the Holy Communion, and so so they were condemned for for that. But they didn't they didn't say that she's um she didn't say that she was part of the Trinity. And in fact, if if you want to say that the Coloridians believed 
that Mary is is God or something. Um, they first of all, um, they, we have no evidence that they existed in the time of Muhammad, right? This is in the, this is in the fourth century, but but let's say like if they existed in the time of Muhammad, which we have no evidence that they did, so there, it would make no sense for him to be addressing a group that doesn't exist anymore. But if he if he was, they wouldn't be saying three because they they still believed in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, um, and we we know that because. Um, because uh, the saint who wrote against this about this group, um, um, Epiphanius, uh, he he wrote uh, basically condemning them for, for by saying uh, he he's saying that uh, not not to offer the bread to Mary and not to think of her as as something greater than what she is. Um, that she she's equal, like she she's a human just like we are. It's he said he said to honor Mary, uh, honor Mary, but the Father in the whole the Father. The Son of the Holy Spirit are to be worshipped, not Mary. And so he's not saying you guys don't believe in the Holy Spirit. He's saying what you should be doing is only giving the glory and the honor and the worship to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Don't give that to Mary. So this group wouldn't have been saying three. They would have been saying four if 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 it's talking about that group. Um, just also addition to that, uh, emphasizing actually, remember even the... Uh, history is like not fully sure if this group was existed and how um, how many of those individuals that's the, another point like it's some if that is the case like all Allah is doing is Allah is writing his I'm writing a book and I want to talk about Islam okay I am only talking about um, Ahmadiyya Muslims as a representative of Islam what they believe or I am only talking about the reform Muslims, which is identified as like number 19 miracle followers, Quran only Muslims. And that just doesn't make sense if you are going to write a book about Islam. Uh, and other thing is, I think Muslims needs to put their brain together and then shake a little bit to get some basic information. You should know by now what people discussed in Council of Nicaea instead of simply going and checking from your imams, your sheikhs, or your Muslim apologist. They don't know the basics. They don't know the basics. In Council of Nicaea, discussion was about, is Jesus, eternal son of God, who become man and dwelled among us, who is truly God and truly man, does he have the same essence or similar essence? That was a term they were discussing. And then that discussion took place, and then we can even read the writings, and then we know what happened. And it was only like a couple of individuals, one individual actually, versus a couple of other people, and then they had healthy discussions. But in 21st century, simply saying, oh, this is what they discussed, is like just a lie. Those, that's just lie and lie and lie. Still, you have to explain to us where this Holy Spirit come then? Why Allah doesn't even talking about the Holy Spirit? Allah failed with months again. He's talking about third of three. Then Allah needs to be talking about third of fourth of four or third of fourth. Just doesn't make sense. Just think little bit. Right. Think little bit because by now you should have learned that your sheikhs, your Muslim apologist, your father, your mother. The most trusted individuals you have in your life lie to you. Don't trust them. And don't trust their Sheikh Google ones. If you just go to the normal Google who doesn't have the Sheikh title, you will simply know what has been discussed in Council of Nicaea. That will help individuals to have healthy conversations. Right. And, and I also want to say that this Muslim, whoever made that comment, is contradicting the previous Muslim because the previous Muslim was saying that you never have the the, the Trinity as defined as Allah, Jesus, and Mary. But this other Muslim just told us that actually this was a Christian belief yeah. and this is what the Quran is addressing. So is the Quran addressing it or not? The Muslims can even agree in the chat on who on, on whether this is talking about the Trinity or not. One guy says it is, the other guy says it's not. Um, and, and again, what the verse is saying do not say three do not say three 
there's no evidence anywhere in any writings that the, that the Coloridians believed that Mary was the Holy Spirit or that they didn't believe in the deity and personhood of the Holy Spirit. So they wouldn't have so so if Mary was a part of their their godhead, let's say, if if she was, then they wouldn't be saying 3, they'd be saying 4. So if the Quran were addressing them, it wouldn't say do not say 3, it would say do not say 4. But as you said, and as we emphasized, the Quran never talks about the worship of the Holy Spirit. And this, to us, it makes it very clear that it cannot be from God. Poor Allah doesn't know the basics. Therefore, we cannot expect uh, Muslims to agree within themselves what Allah is trying to say. Because Allah is ve Allah's communication skill is like, I don't want to be mean in here, but worse than my communication skills. So, um, brother, we looked at 517, and then we talked about uh, what is the reason Allah is destroying Jesus and Mary if if Allah is, uh, in the sentence, Allah is identified as Allah is Christ, and um, what is the purpose of that, that identifies for us that Jesus and Mary, in, in a sense, identified as being alongside of Allah. Um, have you got um, next verse? Would you like me to move to the something else? Yeah, let's let's go to chapter. Um, unless Sister uh, Daughter of Christ has anything she wants to add. Do you have anything, Sister? Uh, no, let's let's move on. Okay, so chapter five, verse seventy-five. Chapter five, verse seventy-five. Um, and and so as you're pulling it up, I'll, I'll just give a brief summary. This verse is saying it's 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 again that, that there are people who believe that Jesus and Mary are gods, so they're definitely part of this three that the Christians are saying. And yeah, uh, uh, best listen, the Quran. Right, exactly. This is the Quran. So we're, so uh, so it says the Messiah, son of Mary was not but a messenger. Messengers have passed on before him, which that's a whole another topic about passing on before him, but there's a, something to note about that afterwards. And then it says, and his mother was a supporter of truth. They both used to eat food. Look how we made clear the signs to them. Then look how they are deluded. So you might, you might read that and be kind of confused. Why does it mention Jesus? And why does it mention his mother, and then say they both ate food. And uh, maybe, Daughter of Christ, you want to fill us in on what does the Quran mean when it says they both ate food? It means they are mortal. It means they are not gods, or gods, plural, as the Quran is trying to tell us, that we believe, which we don't. Um, and the tafsir say that. Uh, tafsir Jalalain, it says, means it means they are not mortal. And if you happen to be a bit like Abbas going towards the Quran only, the verse afterwards says, uh, say, do you worship beside God what has no power or harm to benefit you? Meaning, Mary and her son, from the verse before. So it's saying, look, Jesus and Mary eat food. And then the verse after saying, how can you worship them? They can't harm you or benefit you. This part, they're part of this fake trinity. Jesus, Mary, and Allah, whom nobody worships. And it doesn't say any group, it says Christians. Right. And, and I just want to emphasize again how this shows such a lack of familiarity with what Christians believe. The idea that you can just say, um, Jesus ate food, therefore he's not God. Or Jesus and his mother ate food, therefore they're not gods. Just shows us that the Quran has no familiarity with what Christians believe. It has no conception of the fact that we actually believe that Jesus has a divine nature and a human nature, right? So him eating food doesn't do anything to the argument. You have to define who Jesus is first. And if God can assume or take on a human nature, the question is whether he can do things that humans can do, such as eat food. So the idea that the Quran thinks this is a, a great rebuttal, you guys believe Jesus is God? Well, guess what? Jesus ate food. <laughs> the idea that this is supposed to be a convincing argument is really just laughable. Actually, I don't know whether to laugh or to cry because people actually believe 
that this is the book and the word of God. And this is why Muslims say, how can Jesus be God? He, he ate food. He Well, it's because the Quran gives them the stupid definition. It's a bit childish, like you said, brother. He can't be God because he, he ate food. Well, is that the definition of God? Who gave that definition? And it's a bit childish. Um, and that's that's where Muslims inherit the stupid argument from, from uh, their book, the Quran. Because the Quran itself gives the stupid argument. Just the same as, a stupid, as the stupid argument the Quran makes, Allah can't have a son because he has no girlfriend, which is another stupid argument. So uh, Muslims, stop getting your arguments from the Quran because it makes no sense. Um, let me add a couple of points on what you said. So as a Christian, we do not have any problem for eternal son of God to come and dwell among us as truly man. So Lord Jesus Christ is identified as truly God and truly man. As a man, okay, or as a God man, Lord Jesus Christ, yes, Probably he cried when he needed his mom to feed him. He got hungry. He ate food. He drank water. He went to bathroom. He had a shower. He didn't have proper running shoes. He couldn't. Um, he didn't uh, fly around. Uh, he did all things truly human does. Okay, that's what Christian scripture is telling telling us. Eternal Son of God humbled himself become a servant, lived among us, and gave himself on the cross for us so that we can declare righteous with God. That's all it is. So we are not surprised that Jesus ate food. Jesus got hungry, and then he said, by the way, I am the bread of life. Jesus, Jesus become um, thirsty, and then he said, by the way, I need to drink water. But I am the living water. Whoever drinks from this will never thirst again. He was homeless. And then he said, I come from heaven. And then I will go and build rooms for you. He is truly God and truly man. We do not have any problem with that. But I would have a problem with Allah where it states, oh, because um, Jesus and her mother, his mother, ate food I would have a problem like okay so Allah has a womb Allah has a shin therefore Allah is like walking around Allah has two hands he's moving his hands so what is what the food he's gonna eat in paradise fish liver he must be doing something if he's got a womb and then his womb is speaking to him if he's got a shin he's walking around he looks behind the veil he moves his fingers. He's got angels who are carrying his throne. All those physical things. I am sure your Allah is getting hungry. And I am guessing, poor Allah, he doesn't have the falafel in Islamic paradise or wherever Allah is. He's just eating from the fish liver. And that's not very nice at all. That's not very much nice at all. It's because, sister, in the Islamic thinking, God cannot humble himself to do things like we do, eat food, uh, do other things that you mentioned. And that's the difference. And uh, Allah is proud. Sorry, Sister Gon. Just like another point is, Surah 29, 46 or 49, like your God and my God is the same. Allah is supposed to be, according to Muslims, God of Old Testament. Okay. And then they say, oh, Muslims, uh, Christians corrupted their scripture, all those kind of things, which is false. But even Allah, when he comes, so God comes and then reveals himself to Abraham as the word of God comes to Abraham. Remember, the, uh, they eat food together. Even God of the Old Testament shares meal with Abraham. But Allah, Allah can't even bother to do anything with human for humans. Allah did nothing for you people. Allah doesn't offer you salvation. Allah just watch, watch you over as he predestined you to go to hell. He stayed back. He stays back and just allows you to go and do whatever you want to do so that you can make your way to hell. And it is, it is not acceptable at all because that Allah 
a God who doesn't even move by your accept, accepting him or rejecting him. That is not good at all. Even God of Old Testament comes and then shares meal with his people. Allah probably, uh, probably Allah doesn't even know how to use knife and fork because he's got only two right hands, you know, and then he can't use knife and fork together. Probably that's why he has a problem when truly God man, Lord Jesus Christ, eats food while states he is the bread of life. And then in this verse, he simply puts Mary as another God. Why? Oh, Mary can't be God as well because Mary was eating as well. I am finding those things disturbing and stressing, but can't do much about it. Allah, does, Allah is not a quick learner. Exactly. And so... And so, uh, so those are all the verses that I could think of that speak about this topic. Um, if you guys have any more that you wanted to add on, uh, by all means. But I just want to summarize the argument one last time, which is simply this point. The simple point is that if the Quran is truly from God, then it would accurately, accurately represent what the doctrines that it's refuting. Because God knows all things and God's not going to misrepresent people. God's not going to straw man people. So the fact that the Quran identifies the three or the Trinity as three different gods and then the members of this Trinity as three different gods, as Jesus, his mother Mary, and Allah, the fact that it identifies them as three different gods and misidentifies the identities of these persons is proof to us that it cannot be from God. So to the Muslims, we want to, I want to say to the Muslims, really think about this. Think about this. How can your God, how can your God misrepresent or misunderstand what it is we believe? How is it possible for an all-knowing God to do that? And that's the um, uh, all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you very much, brother, daughter of Christ. And of course, sister, we know historically because of um, the straw man that the Quran does about Christians, they've been called polytheists by Muslims, they've been called mushrikeen, they've had uh, to pay jizya, they've had their lands uh, stolen from them by Muslims because they are, uh, according to the Quran, disbelievers who believe in three gods. And um, basically, the, the animosity and the hatred theologically between Christians and Muslims is because Muslims think that they believe in one God and Christians believe in three. And it's a lie. And um, because of this lie, there's been uh, so much uh, animosity and hatred towards Christians because of the ignorance of Allah and Muhammad in the Quran. Be doing a straw man argument, posing as a fake trinity for their belief, and they're attacking them for that false belief. And that's something real, and it's still happening today. Welcome to the world of Islam. So what we will do is we will pick up a couple of comments from the chat. Um, Dot of Christ, do you have access to chat or do you want me to have access to chat? Uh, I have access to chat. Okay, so we take a couple of comments or questions from chat. But I just want to emphasize what uh, Brother Jay said. If God, whom's supposed to be all wise, almighty, all that old junk, doesn't even know what Christian scripture teaches and what Christians believe, how can you trust that Allah when it comes to your eternity? And if if some of you think, oh, eternity is just being five minutes late to the bus or missing the train. No, eternity is so long. Eternity is like so long, doesn't have end. You cannot trust him when it comes to your eternity if Allah doesn't even know basic doctrines what Christians believe basic doctrines like we emphasize today like you cannot be Christian if you do not believe in triune God yet Allah doesn't even know who triune God is Allah doesn't even understand that and 1.8 billion of you are trusting your eternity when it comes to 
trusting um, him when it comes to your eternity. Very much and very much sad. And just a side note, in that eternity, there is no ice cream in hell. There is no sunbathing in hell. And there is a punishment cooking and cooking and cooking in hell. You cannot trust him. You cannot trust him. He doesn't get maths correct. He doesn't get what I believe correct. And he doesn't even know what previous scripture is teaching. Shame on him. Seriously, like if I was Allah, I would hang myself. That it make not, as I'm thinking through, it makes more sense to me why Muhammad wanted to commit suicide because he knew what is coming, okay? Yeah, I'm gonna make up lots of lies. I won't be able to put everything together. Let me just take my life once again because I won't be able to fix this. He should have just read a book or um, <laughs> he, he should have, have gone and asked a, a Christian what they believe. That's it. Yeah, he does, but doesn't go well. It doesn't go well. Um, have you got any things from the chat do you want to um, bring to um, attention of Brother J's yeah. sister? We got a question for both of you. Uh, MBT says, if Muslims believe the Quran is eternal and holy, is that considered another God for them? What do you think, sister? Brother Jay? He's the guest. Um, first, uh, guest goes first. Yeah, uh, well, thank you. Um, if Muslims believe that the Quran is eternal, then they're definitely suggesting, usually what Muslims say is that uh, the Sunni Muslims who, who take that position, they'll say that the Quran is it, it, his word is it's not him but it's not not him <laughs> it's like uh, it's like uh, double speak so yes um they're definitely stating that allah exists and then eternally next to him is this book so they believe in these two eternal things and that's definitely a problem if they're telling us that there are these pure monotheists and tawhid and all these other things that they say yeah and also addition to that not only Quran is identified as the eternal word of Allah, like another being alongside of Allah. Also, certain surahs in the Quran is going to take different shape and forms and going to come and intimacy for individuals. And according to um, Salafi Islam, that's sharing attributes of Allah to, to uh, Allah with something else. And that makes those surahs already... If Surah is going to intercede for you, Surah is must be all-knowing, all-powerful, and all-present. And um, you do have hadith that eternal word of Allah is going to appeal as a pale man. And then you do have word, hadith talking about certain Surahs are going to argue with Allah until you are forgiven. So, yes, Quran is uh, with 114 chapters with the current version has... And is another being. Therefore, Islam is the ideology of shirk. Yeah, and... Uh, By the way... To... Oh, sorry, go ahead, sister. Sorry, brother. And to prove that, most Bible, how Muslims actually treat the physical copies of the Quran, uh, they put them on a high place. They don't put any other books above the Quran. Uh, they kiss the Quran when they hold it. They don't put it on the floor. And uh, before they touch it, they have to wash and you can't touch it if you're on your period. So they, that's actually the physical copy. So it's a bit like because they see it in that way, they treat a physical object like the physical copy of the Quran as a bit like the black stone. But so not you, sister, you drilled holes in it, which is why it's dangerous for you. No, uh, go on, brother, I'm so. showing lots of respect. I'm making sure like Muslims don't get to read those dangerous and Allah's mistakes and those mistakes are where the holes are okay verses can't be read well um brother um I, I was just gonna add um in, in light of of what you said um which which Quran is is this eternal Quran which which version which Quran is it which reading is it are, are all of the Qurans eternal <laughs> and then if every single one of them all of the um Qur'at are all eternal um, as you said, each chapter, each surah, are, are, each chapter of the Quran are going to be manifesting and, and judging and uh, uh, interceding, right? So, yeah. so how many how many eternal Qurans are there? I wonder. Maybe the Muslims can help us out with that. It's um, it only it's only going to be the correct recitation. So therefore, um, 
if I was Muslim, I would start from yesterday and pray that Hafs is the right recitation to intercede for you. Otherwise, if it's the Kalun that you, you messed up because you are not reciting Kalun one. Okay, we have um, a comment. Allah created mules. <laughs> um, uh, says, Allah can't enter his creation. He needs nothing from his creation. So how come he needs the human royal we to talk about himself? Brother? Um, so I, I don't, I, I know that that's what Muslims tell us, but about Allah not being able to enter his creation. But I think, I think actually that the Quran teaches and the Hadith also teach that Allah can enter into his creation. But let's just take the Muslim position if, if it's true, if it's true that Allah cannot enter into his creation. And, and sorry, what was the second part of the comment again? How come, uh, if he doesn't need anything from his creation, how come he uses the royal we, which is human? Oh um, right, for himself. Yeah, yeah um, I, I know that on uh, on Sierra International, um, Anthony Rogers has been doing uh, shows on Allah in the plural, and I think it's been really great shows. I highly recommend them for people to watch. Um, and one of the points that 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 uh, the brother makes is that Allah speaks in the plural because the plural is supposed to be majestic. So Allah's speaking as if he's plural because that's supposed to be majestic. However. Allah is actually not plural, right? So he's not actually majestic. Is that is that the logic? Um, I thought that was a really interesting argument from uh, Brother Anthony. Uh, yeah, so please do check out those videos. It will help you with in your um, evangelism. And it will help you to be more, become more convinced of Allah messed up. Uh, so you've got Surah 27, verse 8, Allah enters into creation okay allah comes into the creation and then you've got hadith where allah comes to the third heavens so allah does move around and then enters his creation so um those are the kind of and allah is also needy if you think allah's attributes they're supposed to be eternal uh, then um, allah needs cre need to create humans to practice some of his attributes um, Allah creates humans out of need to be truly Allah. We may, I made a short video on Allah is like needy, single, something. Do check that out as well. You might find that a little bit helpful. And mm -hmm. what do you think Same. about the question, daughter of Christ? You are you are not there to just read the questions. You should be commenting on them, daughter. Of <laughs> I'm just um, enjoying it so much. I'm like acting like I'm watching. Um, yeah. Uh, I agree, and uh, actually, Anthony uh, Rogers made a good point. Is that God? Uh, sorry, Allah doesn't use we all the time when He talks about Himself. Yeah, he uses we sometimes, and I sometimes. Sometimes within the same verse, He says I, and then we. So, does that mean that He's not royal when He says I, but He's ro all those times? Uh, it's very confusing. We know from our scripture, it makes perfect sense. When God said, let's create man in our own image, it's because he was the triune God. Um, the three persons were uh, involved in creation. But it, Allah can't make the same statement because he's a singular, like you said, lonely and um, desperate single. So <laughs> um, it doesn't make sense in the Quran. That's all I was going to say. It should break heart of Muslims like how... Allah doesn't know the basics and cannot go around the basics. Um, have you got last comment or last question, sister? Uh, I just want the Muslims to, uh, like Brother Jay said and you said, sister, to start thinking about what Allah gets wrong. And Allah gets everything wrong from A to Z, from beginning to end. No, Even if you want to give him the benefit of the doubt. He still gets it wrong, uh, like brother mentioned with, or even with these fringe groups. Um, he never talks about the Holy Spirit, who has always been uh, in uh, Christian uh, belief, always. Uh, and Allah gets makes an attempt at stating what Christians say uh, believe, and he fails miserably. He says three gods when we believe in one, uh, three beings when we believe in one. 
he says Mary when uh, there's no such thing as Mary, uh, in, even if he means the Trinity, which he doesn't. Mary is not in the Trinity. No Christian believes that. Uh, he, he calls himself the Messiah. He calls Allah himself as the Messiah, which is not true. Um, even if we assume, like you said, he's the, he means Father is Allah. Father never is called the Messiah in our scripture. He just gets everything wrong from beginning to end. It's just mind-boggling. And then he attacks us for the belief that we don't have. And um, I just want Muslims to think about this. Uh, we'll actually just come to the conclusion that this is a bunch of nonsense. Um, Quran gets the belief of, uh, you know, the one of the big, biggest faiths on earth, you know, wrong. And then he attacks them for that. And as brother actually did in one of his other videos, he gets the belief of the Jews wrong. He thinks that they, they worship uh, Uzair, which is something the Jews never said and never believed. So it's this straw man. And the reason Islam does this straw man for all the other faiths is because it wants Muslims to dismiss everything else except Islam by lying about everything else. And we say they have, Allah has lied, Muhammad has lied, Islam has lied. Come to the truth, which is not in the Quran, it's in the word of God. Go on, sister. Thank you very much, sister. Brother Jay, do you want to um, make last conclusions or comments? Okay, um, well, I feel like um, Dada really summed it up very well there. But I'll just give my thanks and gratitude again for allowing me to come on the show with you guys. It's a, it's a very it's an honor for me to be with you. I look up to you both, and I really appreciate it. And I pray God blesses you and blesses this program today and of all the viewers of it. I pray God blesses them all. And for everyone who's watching that's not saved, we pray that you come to know the one true Triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And for the Muslims specifically. We pray that you see the errors that we brought out today and that you come to the true triune God. Amen. Um, thank you very much, brother. And um, I must say it, um, it's been very helpful session in a sense, not only exposing how Allah mess up with the knowledge, but also thinking through very, very simple statements Allah makes shows he doesn't have the basic knowledge. While Christian scripture screams out that we worship God who is triune, Allah and Islam steps in and doesn't even understand what we believe. Very much, very much sad. And Brother Jay and Daughter of Christ tonight help us to look at some of the Quranic verses and then think through application of that. And also looking from the historical perspective, what was happening, why such a stupid claims are made. And... Conclu bottom line is this Quran is supposed to be the eternal word of Allah and if Allah doesn't even know what I believe and the information he gives in his book does not represent me Allah has nothing to do with me Allah is false God Muhammad is false prophet and Quran is false book and we already expressed actually during the live stream wherever you stand wherever you stand if you do not believe in triune god if you do not believe eternal son of god lord jesus christ become truly god truly man god man and gave himself on the cross for us on the third day he resurrected and we are saved because and through his blood if you are not seeing God as the triune God, I am afraid to tell you, actually, you are not saved. Actually, you are not Christian, and actually, you do not believe in our awesome, delightful, and gorgeous God. And I don't need to verbalize that again for Muslims. Muslims know this much better than me. Your needy Allah, who needs basic knowledge in, from 21st century Christians, and he even needed basic knowledge from Jalalayan or Ibn Qadiri, from Ibn Abbas, to help him out what Allah wanted to say. That Allah done nothing for you. Allah didn't even bother to provide your salvation. Allah just looks from the outside and then plans for you to make your way to hell. 
and that is his desire. Allah created hell for jinns and for men, for devil and for men, versus triune God. Father gave his one and only son, one and only son, and that one and only son gave himself for us once for all. Hope I do hope that as you look at the Quranic verses, it helps you to see how Allah doesn't make sense when it comes to what I believe. So I would expect from Muslims, after what Brother Jay and Daughter of Christ showed us tonight, I would expect you to come up with some useful and better arguments when you engage with Christian Christians about the God we worship. So, um, Brother Jay and Daughter of Christ, thank you very much for joining me. And it was... I think it was a pleasure to have Brother Jay. He's like very kind, nice, and <laughs> very, very good and helpful information. And it was good team with Daughter of Christ as always. Um, so um, I will put the description of um, YouTube channel of... Um, I would put the YouTube channel of Brother Jay on the description for you to follow up some of the short videos and well-educated videos he puts up for us so that we can learn more. And as we learn more, our aim is we use it for God's glory. We use, the, we use those information so that people go and preach our glorious gospel and their lives are being transformed with our glorious God. But let me put... I think one good song for us to remember. And we will see you tomorrow on another live stream. God bless you all. Let's remember Allah is false God and Muhammad is false prophet. Allah is a false God, a false God, a false God. Allah is a false God, a false, false God. Allah is a false god, a false god, a false god. Allah is a false god, a false, false god. And Muhammad is not a prophet. Muhammad is not a prophet. If you want grace and mercy and love, Islam is not for you. But Jesus is the way, the truth, the way, the truth and the life. Jesus is the King of kings who died to save us all. If you just repent and believe he took your sins on the cross, then mercy and grace, forgiveness and love, eternity can be yours. But Allah is a false God, a false God, a false God. Allah is a false God, a false, false God. If you want grace and mercy and love, Islam is not for you. But Jesus is the way, the truth, the way, the truth and the life. Jesus is the King of kings who died to save us all. If you just repent and believe he took your sins on the cross, then mercy and grace, forgiveness and love, eternity can be yours.